glass, born from the roar and blast of the furnace. A mixture of sand and fire. It glows, becomes liquid, molten, and malleable. A constant rhythm of heating and cooling, blowing, pulling, and shaping. For 1,000 years, a tradition of perfecting techniques, of passion for the material, and of inventive genius. The masters of Murano, part chemist, part poet, part painter, part magician, creators of beautiful objects for eternity. Venice, gateway to the east, crossroads of diverse histories and cultures, the source of a glassmaking tradition that has since touched the whole world. Continual inspiration lay in the subtle changes of color reflected in the water of the sparkling lagoons. In 1292, the threat of a bad fire from the furnaces caused the Guild of Glassmakers to move from Venice to the neighboring island of Murano. Confining glassmaking to this small island further assured Italy that its closely held secrets of glass technique would be protected from foreign eyes. Since then, generations of Murano families have been devoted exclusively to the evolution of glass as an expression of beauty. Today, Murano remains a vital center of creativity, a hub of collaboration for 3,000 people. Still, there is a sense of secrecy along the canals and alleys, behind the facades and signs of the many factories whose traditions began before America was even discovered. Here burn the furnaces where the fires of men are fueled to forge great beauty. Here work the masters of Murano. Apprentices surround the master at work. Lino Tagliapietra, teaching, leading, directing a group process. His eye, his experience, helps set standards and perpetuate the best in glass. An apprentice system as old as glassmaking itself further guarantees perfection. One deft movement opens a piece at the critical moment. The move, perfected over the years, determines the shape of a large glass plate. Taglia Pietra speaks of Murano's special position in the history of glass blowing. This plate was born in Murano, only exclusively in Murano. The large scale of this piece, the deep opaque black color and the wonderful beige and black zebra striping are uniquely characteristic of Murano technique. The dark contrasting lines on the plate are made from long rods of glass called canes. More than one color can be used. Cane can be twisted, then cut into short cross sections of glass called marina. The small beads of marina sections can be of infinite variety in color and size. The making of the canes is an art unto itself. Some glass blowers make their own, but there are also specialists who do nothing but make canes for the masters to use. This cane maker works directly for Taglia Pietra. He cuts a marina especiale made to commemorate a special congress held in Venice. Each letter, each detail, is a tiny piece of glass. The discovery of this technique around 1500 revolutionized Italian glassmaking. The blower takes the first steps in making a vase with multicolored canes. He has a gather of molten glass at the end of his punte rod. The canes, laid out in a pattern, are taken up. More rolling and twisting enlarges the piece and absorbs the canes into the glass. Over the years, the use of canes has become symbolic of Murano glass. With their limitless decorative possibilities, they have spurred the masters of Murano to great heights. Taglia Pietra proceeds to form the vase shape. 
the ultimate result is a classic black piece with an interior and lip of orange striping. The striping began as a simple cane. Taglia Pietra, a recognized master of technique. Strong colors, sophisticated application of cane, a combination that makes a bold, distinctive statement in glass. Another furnace on the island belongs to Luciano Vistosi. Urbane, well-traveled, Vistosi is absorbed with the issue of design. I feel that glass as an expression of art is one of the most interesting experiences there is. Because glass has peculiarities that no other material possesses. It's transparent, delicate, hard, all at the same time. I don't know of any other material like it. So when someone wants to work in glass, I feel they should do so with great humility, because it can produce surprises belonging to no other material. Sparkling blue marina. Following the traditional method, the gather of glass is rolled to take them up. This is the first of many steps in the long and intricate building of a large plate called by Vistosi, Nevarino. The entire ball is heated and the marina are absorbed, ready to lend their pattern to the emerging shape. Slowly, it cools for the next steps. Another master works the molten glass with a wooden paddle. His helper must continually return the glass to the fire. Overcooling will cause the piece to crack. Another member of the team now attaches a new punti rod so the original blowpipe can be removed and the opening reheated and finished. A blower cools the newer glass to equalize the temperatures. Variations in temperature when joining two pieces can also cause cracking. Again and again, the furnace. The formation of the plate continues. The opening is made wider. Excess glass is carefully cut away. And always, the piece must be returned to the fire. A new punti rod brings the next element of design, what will become a wide band of clear glass. A few drops of water applied at the precise spot cause the glass to crack. The handling of such a large piece requires great strength. The final step is the tedious application of a small bead of cobalt glass, which will accent the entire plate. This step is taken only by a master. And always, the piece must be returned to the fire. Tweezers and paddle, the same for 800 years. fire. Opening the plate. The perpetual motion of the art of glass. Vistosi watches carefully to be certain the plate matches his high standards. When I was little, As a child, I would walk home from school each day passing by the sea. In the winter months, the colors of the sea were constantly changing between blue and green. When I grew up and became technically proficient at working glass, I designed this plate as a kind of tribute to that wonderful memory and gave it the name of the wind from Yugoslavia that caused those extraordinary colors, the Nevarino. Alfredo Barbini, a name revered in Murano, 
respected by glass lovers the world over. Alfredo was born on Murano in 1912 and has been working in glass all his life. Now, with his son Flavio, he continues to explore the endless possibilities of glass. Light streams through the tall windows in this ancient building, which was once a grand palazzo. Barbini uses canes, too. The steps are familiar, but always new. Rolling on the marbling board, heating, shaping, blowing, ever-changing, applying the ancient technique of filigree in a contemporary mode. of the preliminary work for Barbini. He must conserve his strength for the critical moments in the making of this bowl. Alfredo is one of the artists most responsible for the development of a modern sensibility in the glass movement. He left behind the stereotypes of Murano glass and confronted the medium with a regard for form and function. Barbini prepares the piece and himself for the crucial last steps. With the full force of a young man, he swings the piece to achieve the desired effect of a falling handkerchief. A gesture perfected with time. touches are made. The measurements are correct. An artist fulfilled again. The furnace of Barbini is a family venture. In addition to Flavio, his sister Oceana handles the sales and administration. Working together as a family is the traditional Italian way. Alfredo and Flavio collaborate closely on all new designs. The drawing proceeds. The steps for the making of a glass centerpiece are reviewed. The base, the bowl, the rim. The virtue of simplicity. begins. Barbini uses a very pure soda glass called Cristallo, first developed in Murano in the 14th century. It has remarkable clarity and sparkle. Barbini shapes and forms and measures and turns. His team watches and learns as he pushes the medium to its limits. His control of the vitreous material is perfect. He is clearly a master whose talent and authority are undisputed. A master of Murano.